One of the great issues of our day is the issue of happiness, and it goes back actually to the time of Aristotle, who made the observation, happiness is the one thing you can choose for itself. Everything else is chosen for the sake of happiness. So this one little word is controlling within us what we think about life, our principles, religion, our job, career, our friends, our spouses. I mean, it controls everything, especially for our young people. So it's essential that they get it straight. Uh, in a book called uh, Finding True Happiness, um, I, I try to describe, you know, four levels of happiness. Uh, the first one, uh, a very, very uh, sort of elementary or superficial level, which is, you know, uh, eating a bowl of linguine or a great ice cream cone comes from external pleasure. The second level of happiness, which is the one our culture is sort of obsessed with, is ego comparative happiness. This is the kind of happiness that comes from trying to be better than others or getting comparative advantage, and from that, an ego boost. Who's achieving more? Who's achieving less? Who's got more power, less power, more intelligence, less intelligence, more status, less status, etc. And then the third level of happiness, which is kind of the opposite of level two. Level two is always pointing toward myself. Level three happiness is pointing outwards. How can I make an optimal positive difference to the world? So the idea is contributive happiness. I'm happiest when I'm making the most positive difference to someone or something beyond myself. So it's, you know, how can I make an optimal positive difference to my family, to my friends, to my uh, kingdom, of, to the kingdom of God, to my church, to my community, to my organization, etc. And the fourth kind of happiness, will come as no surprise to anybody, is the kind that comes through faith. We call it transcendent happiness. That's when I become happy by, by being integrated uh, in, into kind of a transcendental life, a life of prayer. And, and this kind of happiness comes when uh, uh, essentially, uh, I'm not just praying with God or communing with God. I feel like I'm walking with Him, living with Him, and following the Holy Spirit. And this kind of, of, of happiness, level one and level two happiness isn't going to lead us to anything ultimate, right? It's just going to lead us ultimately to jealousy, fear of failure, fear of loss of esteem, right? To ego rage, ego, uh, you know, uh, uh, frustrated ego satisfactions, inferiority, superiority, and all the kinds of things that kind of make life miserable. But if we get up to level three, and especially level four, where we're in communion with God and trying to follow Him, specifically in Jesus Christ, trying to follow the Holy Spirit uh, in our lives, trying in, in a special way to, to integrate prayers. And as Catholics, I mean, the Eucharist is so rich, just trying to go uh, to the Holy Eucharist, to Mass as often as we can, so that we're really, you know, looking not only toward our salvation, but bringing the kingdom of God right here to earth, building the kingdom, a legacy, a better legacy, legacy we could never ask for than, of course, to live a life of faith, a life for Jesus Christ, a life following the Holy Spirit, a life trying to build the church and the kingdom of God, a life of edification that will lead so many other eternities as Jesus Christ tried to do right into the kingdom of God. And that will stay with you for all eternity.